JD here, Tyrrell Limus, and we are here on F1 2021 as always. And we are back continuing our hot lap and setup series, this time arriving at Singapore. And I've really been looking forward to this track. Probably one of my favorite tracks to drive on a Formula One game. And it's given me a lot of very good success in the past here. But one thing I noticed looking at this leaderboard is that there aren't many wheel users in the top 10, which might be a surprise to some people. But for me, when I was on the controller, this was one of my uh, best tracks uh, over a lap in particular. And I describe uh, this track kind of similar to Baku in a sense where the controller is actually very strong uh, over a lap, mainly because the, the surface of the track is quite low grip so traction is very important and that's something the controller does very well but also because the corners are not very high speed change of direction they're very long uh, sweeping corners which again it doesn't play into the controller's hands but it doesn't give them a disadvantage rather than like a Magnus and Beckett's where you really change the speed very quickly halfway through the corner going from one lock to the other Around here, you don't really have to do that. So, yeah, there isn't really many wheel users in the top 10 um, here. Some quite good ones, which you'll see a little bit later on. So, myself, I've got to speed quite quickly. And really, I was just losing out on the traction areas uh, against some of these people. But the lap, I was very happy with. As I said before, around this track, you really want downforce, but you don't want to slide around because you need a car that doesn't go through the roof on tight temps in a race so that's what i'm trying to create with this setup it's very stable very good over the curbs but in a race situation it is not going to overheat the tires because you need that mix of performance but then you also need that stability and make it raceable as well so you can see we do a 32.3 i was pretty happy about that definitely some time in it but overall with this setup i was very very happy with it so we're going to dissect this up now. So at the start finish line, I want to be looking above the track. So there's a black box here. And as I go past it, as it goes out of view, that's where I start to break here. I come through this corner. Before the curb starts, that's your turning in point. Take a lot of curb here all over that sausage curb. You have to take a lot of curb. Otherwise, you're going to lose so much time. This one, again, taking a lot of curb. Try and hook your right wheel over past that sausage curb because that will drag you around very nicely as it finishes that's your turning in point first gear for that extra rotation but you really don't need it coming out through here now had a little snap of the oversteer but we've still got a decent exit use all of the curb that's where you want to be braking you want to go slow in fast out here so sacrifice the entry a little bit make sure you hook this curb on the inside because it really will give you a good launch come with this corner use all the track on the exit and we get a very, very, you can see how much of a good launch we got coming off this corner. Stay nice and tight. Now at the end of the straight, as the barrier moves over to the right, that's where you want to put your wheel in that gap. That's where you want to be braking. Make sure you put half your car on this curb, quite similar to turn one. You want to hook it around. Use all the track on the exit. As you go past the black box, that's where you want to be braking just before this 50 meter board. Go through here, try and kiss this curb. Could have been a bit closer now. Aim for the 50 meter board. Just before that, that's where you turn in. Kiss this curb up into fourth gear. Use all the track on the exit. And that was done very nicely. This one, you really have to attack it just before the 50 meter board. That's where you want to be braking. Coming to here, take a lot of curb on the entry. Stay nice and tight here. Don't let it drift out too wide. This corner is really a little bit about feeling. But as the barrier is straight, that's where you want to be turning in. Take all of the curb here because it gains you so much time if you do. On this one, you want to avoid this curb. Just brush it, but don't touch it. Go flat out into fifth gear. And as the wheel is straight, that's where you want to do all your braking. And you can see as we're going off the brakes, that's where we actually start turning in. Double shift into third gear just to try and maximize that traction. Hit the DRS sign. Make sure you don't forget that. Then coming into here, you want to be braking at just after the 100 meter board. 
Wouldn't be quite attacking this corner once again here. Going down through the gears. Stay nice and tight to this curb. Use all the track on the exit. Don't go past that white line. Otherwise, you will get an invalidation. Stay tight going into this corner. And as the wheel's straight, that's where you want to be braking. See how much curb we take here. Hitting the sausage curb once again. This one, these corners you really just have to take with confidence. Hook it on the inside again, like a scale electrics. If you don't, then your car is just going to wash out very quickly into that wall. Probably one of the most famous corners on this track coming up here. As you just go underneath that black box. So once it goes out of view, that's why I start braking. Really attack this. You just have to risk it going through into here. You really have to get as close as you possibly can. Once you go to the middle of the track, that's what we want to be turning in. We want to be brushing this curb. So don't fully mount it. And into this one, I look at the black box here. And as that goes out of view, this black box there, that's where I start braking and turning in. Take a lot of curb once again on the entry, avoiding the sausage curbs because it will unsettle the car if you take too much. Now going through into here again, similar story, just avoiding the sausage curbs. Let it run on the exit as much as you can. And then into here, you don't do any braking, but just before the 50 meter board, that's where you want to turn in beforehand. So you can see here, no braking, just a lift on the throttle. Try and get more on the curb than that. I actually missed the apex ever so slightly here. And then coming towards the line, it's a 32.3. And I was very happy with this once again. My setup is pretty much exactly the same as uh, Vipers. The only difference is the wings. He used 1011 and I used 1111. And I don't think there's anything else really changed from that. I think you just need the downforce around here. It felt very stable. It didn't slide around at all. You can see Ron Haar. I don't know if he's done a real lap there, but I noticed there was a lot of pretty good wheel users not high up on the leaderboard. So New Zealand Ryden, Viper, they're on controllers. I don't know if the top guy is or not. I'm not 100% certain, but I know a few others around are on the controllers. So you can see we're using 1111 here, 7260, uh, quite a more of a locked configuration. Uh, this geometry, as I said, is pretty much exactly the same what Vipers is. And you know, with this, it's quite a soft suspension, a 2.8, just to make it a little bit easier and a bit more stable over the curbs. 157, 56 I did try, but it was a little bit oversteery. And then going to here, just a nice balance and a pretty standard uh, tire pressure gauge here. So if you are struggling with siding, I'd always recommend going down one in the front wing or lowering the tire pressures. But for me, this felt very, very stable and very good in a race situation. So I hope you found this useful. You can see the consistency of the times there, which again, as I always say, I find to be a very, very important. So thank you so much. I hope you are enjoying the game and I will catch you very soon. Peace.